so now we're at the sweet spot. I, if you look at it historically, if I go back to the dot-com era of the 1990s, I, as I mentioned, I started the Hollywood Stock Exchange in 1996. And then in 1997, I believe it was when Netscape went public. And that was really the beginning of what the dot-com boom era was when Netscape went public. Mark Andreessen, of course, was Netscape. And what did Mark Andreessen just do this week? He announced the public offering of Coinbase. And so this is really going to be like that 1997 moment for, for Bitcoin, where we go from the whole phase of is it real, is it not real, like we saw on the internet in the 90s, uh, to where it becomes uh, absolutely ubiquitous. And the price from here is uh, going to go a lot, lot higher. Well, for 2021, my prediction is 220,000 for okay. coin for 2021. And longer term, really, uh, I say there is no top to Bitcoin because there's no bottom for fiat money. No, no fiat money in, in history is, has lasted. Over the past 300 years, they've all gone to zero or lost 99% of their purchasing power. As uh, Voltaire once said, all fiat money returns to its intrinsic value of zero. No fiat money in the past 300 years has escaped going to zero. Mm -hmm. There's been hundreds of fiat money. The average lifespan of paper money is 27 years. Okay. None have survived. The British pound is still around, although it's no longer backed by silver or gold or anything like that. It is purely fiat. Mm -hmm. And so we can't really say it's been around for the 300 years, but even so it's lost over 99% of its purchasing power. The US dollar has lost 98 to 99% of its purchasing power. Uh, it's a, it, and uh, every, all these other currencies, many hundreds of currencies going back 300 years have all just been disappeared. They've all been erased from existence. They've all gone to zero. So that's a very strong trend. How anyone could look at that history and say, well, no, the, the dollar is going to survive. The dollar is worth something. When, when it's backed by nothing except the Pentagon, as Paul Krugman at the New York Times says, the U.S. dollar is backed by men with guns. Well, guess what? The Pentagon, those guns, it, it costs a lot of money to keep it gassed up. You know how much it costs to keep the Pentagon at, at gassed up every day? The jets, the planes, the transportation, the de all that all that petrochemical. They spend $250 million a day. Yeah. And oh, by the way, we, we just entered it into a secular bull market for commodities. Oil is going up. All the prices of everything going up. So the, so the Fed is like, oh, we're gonna, just going to print more. We're gonna print more. We're gonna print another 10 trillion, 15 trillion, 20 trillion. Well, and then we're gonna all buy it all back and put it on our balance sheet again. We're gonna monetize the debt. We're gonna keep doing that. Okay, well, the purchase, we already see inflation breaking out in the economy right now. Yeah, People it's are noticing happen. it and uh, it's only gonna get worse. So you're gonna see the next few months, food and energy is gonna be up 30, 40, 50%. Your wages are not gonna be the, are gonna be flat. They're not going up. They're going to give more coupons, you know, in the mail. I got this from uh, today. Uh, the Nielsen company, they sent me a letter um, and they just sent, they, they put dollars in there. They put, they just put, they just put money in there. They put $2 oh. in there because it's worthless coupons. It's garbage, <laughs> right? Anything can be used as money. People can use anything as money. In the past, you've used beads, you've used uh, stones, you, we use gold. They've all been used as money. And as long as a, a number, a lot of people use it as money, it becomes money. Okay, so now we've got a global community of uh, 100 million now using Bitcoin. First, so the first point is that they use it as money. Yeah. So they believe it's money. It is money because people use it as money. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's the first point. In other words, money is whatever people think it is. Whatever the community decides it is, that's money. We, we know why gold has became money over time because it has some great properties in that it's uh, it, it's um it has very no entropy right i mean it can it, it'll it'll uh, an ounce of gold today will remain an ounce of gold for 100 years or 200 years it's yeah. it's, it's 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 stable in this sense it's portable it's divisible it's fungible you know it's it's um desirable and it became money and it pushed out all the other versions of it like beads or whatever whatever it's scarce gold is scarce relatively scarce and so for five thousand years people used ultimately gold even the central banks that are using uh, fiat money they do settle between them in gold so we understand why gold is money it's scarce 
It's portable, it's divisible, it's desirable. Um, and if we apply that to Bitcoin, it's absolutely scarce, unlike gold, which is only relatively scarce. Gold, gold is inflating by two or three percent a year, so it's not actually as scarce as Bitcoin. It's more divisible. It's more portable. It's yes. unconfiscatable, which gold doesn't have that property. Gold get, can get confiscated, and it's, mm -hmm. it's been confiscated in the past. In 1933, America's gold was confiscated by FDR and put in Fort Knox. Yeah. Right. So gold is confiscatable. Bitcoin is unconfiscatable. So mm -hmm. uh, the people who are against it are people who are completely vested in the in the system as it is now in the status quo. So people like Nouri El Rubini or Peter Schiff or Paul Krugman of The New York Times or the people at Davos, the people at the IMF, the people at the World Bank who are wed to paper money, who are wed to the idea that the world should be centralized, that they should be there should be a Politburo of authoritarian and authorities who making policy for everybody. And if you were to go against that, you know, you're a heretic and we're going to send in the Inquisition and we're going to burn you at the stake. So it's very similar to what we saw during the medieval times. For example, when Copernicus was, uh, you know, suggesting that it's not the earth at the center, but the sun, right? That was a d direct assault on the Catholic church and the power structures of those of that day. And it set off what we now know to become the Renaissance and which became the enlightenment. Uh, and Bitcoin is similar in that it's totally told the center of the elite world that their money printing fiat money central banks are not the be all and the end all. We've got something here that pushes you out. It's the it's the first change in base layer money in 5,000 years. So they are like the priests of the church. We're not happy about it uh, when they were shown up to be charlatans. Uh, the people, the elites now in the U.S. and around the world are not happy that they're being shown up to be frauds, to be charlatans, that their their philosophy is dead. Their modus operandi is corrupt. Uh, so they're not happy about it. So. We would want, if Bitcoin is going to be successful, we then it would have to attract the ire of the legacy system and the authoritarians who would be challenged by it, of course. So, but one by one, they fall. One by one, they fall and they come over to the side of Bitcoin. We've got three sitting uh, Congress people in Washington now who are actively pro Bitcoin. We've got Cynthia Loomis in Wyoming, who's a senator, who's a Bitcoiner. We've got two others in Washington who are now bit, you know, totally pro Bitcoin. America now is starting to shift uh, to be getting more pro Bitcoin. So I don't and, and, and this idea of government banning it again, completely fallacious argument. Instead, what we're seeing is that governments are realizing they need to embrace Bitcoin to remain competitive. Yes. So they're not going to ban it. They're going to start mining it. They're going to start hoarding it mm -hmm. because we're having what's similar to, well, let's say a Sputnik moment when America entered the space race because the Soviets had put up a satellite in orbit. And then America said, we're going to land a man on the moon. Well, now you've got Iran, Russia, China, Kazakhstan, and several other countries are hoarding and mining Bitcoin. And America is going to look at that and say, wait a minute, do we want Iran to be the richest country in the world? No, we've got to start mining and hoarding Bitcoin right now and it's got to be a hash race or a hash moment where America's got to start to get in the race here. Anybody who abandons Bitcoin is going to be left for dead.